Welcome into K-State Online. I'm Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway. It's instant reaction time from the Wildcats. Originally blowout loss turned heartbreaking loss in Austin, 33-30. Texas gets the overtime victory over K-State. And uh, you may be wondering, why why are you guys at home? Well, that's because uh, Derek Young is boots on the ground. He's marathon man all over the world this week. He's in Austin today. He'll be in Vegas on Monday for basketball. So Drew and I carrying the water here uh, with the instant reaction. And there are a lot of places that we can start from this game. It was all of a sudden just immediately, okay, oh, State doesn't have it today. This is going to be embarrassing to – Oh man, here we go. That like they, they might have something. And K State had the leg up for most of the <laughs> the fourth quarter, basically. And unfortunately, some serious miscues come back to haunt K State. They weren't able to overcome them, and uh, just not a great showing. So a lot of areas we can start with this. I think the number one place that we have to go to though is the decision to go for it on fourth and goal uh, in overtime. So K State had already conceded the kick to Texas. The defense did a good job of holding them. To just the field goal and early on in that that overtime drive will howard hit a strike to ben Sennett, put him in good position to maybe go and score and the first three plays there was promise there there were good opportunities for k-state to maybe have the touchdown first down you know you'd have to see maybe a couple more angles but it just seems if will howard made a, a different read he could get to the right side and walk it in for the win then on second down dj giddens they were trying to throw it to him Looked like he was open, but the offensive line couldn't hold a block. It gets batted by Texas. Uh, also, if there had been time there and, you know, it, not the, the play didn't call for it, so it makes sense why they couldn't find Senate, but he was wide open on that play too. And then third down, they, again, you, you could have had another one there, just missed opportunities, and then fourth down uh, came in K-State. They just couldn't get it done. No time for Will Howard. He's being tracked down immediately, and, I mean, we, we can talk about the play calling in more depth at later points, but the, the biggest thing that I think a lot of people are conflicted on is going for it or not. I'm okay with the call to go for it, uh, essentially because of how overtime works in college football now. If, if you look, yes, Malik Murphy, the Texas quarterback, had been bad most of the day. And so giving him the ball, you're maybe not worried that he will go down and score. But if you are K-State, you are worried about, number one, does Chris Tennant make this kick because there have been already two missed short field goals in the game. The extra point that was a bad snap by Randon Plattner, Jack Bloomer wasn't ready for it. And then the shank by Chris Tennant that K-State had to hustle down the field and, and hit the, the one with just a second on the clock to force overtime. So all that's in the back of your head. And then, like I said, those new overtime rules, if you go to a second overtime, okay, great. I don't think K-State is scoring a touchdown. I think that was their best opportunity right there after they hit the big play to send it to put them in scoring position. They weren't able to do it. And then if you end up in the two-point shootout that they do now once you go to a third overtime, I don't like K-State's chances there because they had not been able to run the ball all day. Short yardage was not their friend as evidence, and it would have worked out well for Texas because the Longhorns were able to get through the line repeatedly, and there was instant contact but they were always able to get the extra couple of yards, and I think they probably would have punched it in pretty early. So I, I'm okay with Chris Kleiman's decision. It just sucks it didn't work out. They had some of the looks there. They just couldn't execute because on each play, somebody did something to maybe falter, and that's kind of the name of the game in Austin for K-State. Yeah, I mean, we talked about it right before we started recording. I said I'm not sure if K-State wins in overtime if they don't score a touchdown. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's possible that you could go field goal, field goal, and Texas scores a touchdown and you lose in double overtime. And like at that point is not just going for the win, probably your best bet. Yeah, no. And, and you had the and you had the opportunities there and the, everything was a possibility and just. It, and I think I, I think the killer and what makes it kind of seem like it was worse was that the fourth down play call just never had a chance. Yeah, like, yeah. Like first, second, and third down, all probably could have been touchdowns if if things go right. I mean, third down went right through Keegan Johnson's hands. Uh, the second down play was just a really good play by the Texas defensive tackle. And then the first down play, if Will probably runs to the right side, he might be able to score. It's so like the first three plays, like you had good plays dialed up. It just looks a lot worse when your fourth down play just has no chance. 
Yeah, and the offensive line, they seem to struggle all day. Obviously, the run wouldn't go early in the game. They just got manhandled. Guys were making mistakes left and right. And then eventually, of course, they, they're not able to hold Texas in check there in overtime. One of the other big notable things on the day, K-State has been a team that everything starts with the run and goes from there. They had to abandon it, but they probably didn't do it soon enough. K-State only runs for 33 yards in the game. In total in the second half, it was not good if you go and look at the numbers. I think K-State averaged less than a half yard per carry in the second half uh, in terms of what they did on the ground. Did not look good. They couldn't do anything there. So the passing explosiveness was in a groove, and they they found some things there, and guys finally started to step up. But it just it, – it's, it's a frustrating outcome for K-State because of uh, – it feels like they, it took them a long time to just completely say, all right, screw the run. We got to throw the ball. You know, I hate, I hate going back to this now since we just kind of wrapped up with a fourth down play. But, like, you say all that, and like, I mean, in my look over the stats too, it's like, do you, do you think that Colin Klein maybe regrets calling a run play on first and goal? Uh, you know, I think actually, like, I, I don't hate it necessarily there. I think that the, because obviously it looks like there there was the hole and you just go to the, the other side, but, you know, it's going to take multiple looks to make sure that it was actually there and everything else. Um, but I also would have been okay with trying to get either DJ Giddens or Treshawn Ward involved in some way there because both of those guys – it's not necessarily their fault that the run game didn't get going. And DJ Giddens still made some plays uh, catching the ball that I thought would have been beneficial. I would have just given it to one of those guys and maybe seen if they could have done something. I think if, you, if you're down there and you realize that it's going to be a, a four-play situation, then I'm okay with running it, and I would have been okay with one of those runs ending up in the hands of one of the running backs and just trying something. Because it's not like it was – you know, first and goal from the nine. It was like first and goal, you know, in the middle oh, of six. Yeah. Yeah. So I would have just tried it and, you know, given something because Texas, I think, was ready for the pass. And they obviously have the pressure on the defensive line that is just going to make K State uncomfortable every time they had to do that. So it's tough. I mean, there's a lot of second guessing that can be done in this game for K State and everything else that, that went down for it. Um, I don't know. It's it, you're just searching for answers and words to say because it it's it's an impressive loss in a number of fashions. I mean, I, I do agree. I think they they definitely waited to go to the pass game probably a little too long. Probably by mid second quarter is when you could really tell that the run game just wasn't going to be there. Yeah. So why why not try and air it out? And I mean, Will Howard had probably his best game of the day or best game of the year throwing the ball today. Uh, I mean, the, the interception wasn't even his fault because it, it, that I said probably middle of the second half when it was, uh, I think it was 27 to, or 24 to 7 at that point, that probably that Keegan Johnson drop interception was probably one of the yeah. bigger plays of the game. Because, I mean, that that's a tone setter because you get nine yards on the first play. You take a shot. It's probably Will Howard's best deep ball all season long, and it hits Johnson in the hands and goes right to a Texas defender. Yeah, no, I'm uh, I'm with you on that. That I mean, that was massive because K State came out and looked like they were going to put themselves in a good spot. It was a good throw by Will Howard and just popped out. And you know, Keegan Johnson kind of redeemed himself a little bit later on in the game, but it just it continued what's been a frustrating year for his usage with K State and everything else that went with it. Um, so I mean, we'll see. But yeah, you, you look at the numbers. K-State attempted to run the ball 17 times to 14 pass plays in the first half, and they were averaging 1.6 yards a carry. Uh, they were getting outgained 307 to 106 in total yardage in the first half. And once they finally settled down and abandoned the run, things started to work out for them, and you just wonder why it took so long. And I get, look, we're not the coaches. They are much smarter at this than we are and everything else. And... So it's easy for us to just say, well, I would have done this, I would have done this. But in this circumstance, there are, you know, these guys are not immune to criticism. And even though they know more than us, they're way better at this than we will ever be. It is fair to ask why they want to get away from it so quick, especially when the past game did show some promise and guys started to make plays. But 
Uh, it's just a, a lot of woulda, coulda, shoulda if you're K-State. Now, defensively, what did you make of K-State's defensive performance today? Because I think at the end of the day, it comes out a lot like the Missouri and Oklahoma State game where you look at it and you go, man, they killed you early. They gave up some massive plays, and you like you want to blame it all on them. But at the end of the day, you look at it and say, the defense did everything they could to keep you in this game. And for almost the first time this year in a losing situation, K-State's offense did almost come through and make it a win. And so the defense struggled at various points, but they did all they could uh, basically from you know late second quarter on to try and give K-State a chance to win this. Oh, yeah, there were struggles early on. I mean, if you say, okay, Texas is going to score 17, and I think it was the first, like, in the first uh, 19 minutes of the game, and they end with 33, and it's because of a field goal in overtime, I, I think that everybody's taking that. Yeah. I mean, the, the defense made plays. They got off the field. I mean, what was crazy about how the first half really played out and how a lot of the second half did until the fourth quarter when it was just a barrage was K state when they got to third down uh, was elite. I think Texas didn't have their first third down conversion until like midway through the third quarter. Yeah. It, and that was with the game being 24 to seven, like the, the defense probably did enough to win the game. I mean, they, they were, they were forcing turnovers. Malik Murphy had one of the worst passes that I've ever seen on that screen yeah. interception that Jacob Parrish had. They forced a fumble. Like the defense probably did uh, all that they could possibly do to win the game, especially when you consider in that uh, the touchdown to make it 24 to seven. Uh, Texas got the ball to like the six yard line. Yeah. And, and like it, that's that's as much as you can ask this team and, and really any team to do with what Texas has offensively. I mean, it, they have probably four, five NFL dudes on offense. So that, that, that's probably the most you're going to be able to get out of them. Yeah. Well, and here's one other note. So you talked about the third down conversions. Texas was 2 of 14 on third down today. So, But K-State was 2 of 13. The, the Cats struggled themselves in that neighborhood. The one area of the defense that was disappointing today was the defensive line because they didn't get any any pressure in this game that I felt was helpful. Um, when they finally did start to get pressure, K-State, that is, it was coming from like Austin Moore got in there on one play and, and almost got, got there. One. Yeah. Zero sacks for K-State today. It didn't feel like the defensive line made an impact. And Texas, even though it felt like K-State did a nice job of containing them and limited that big play, which Jonathan Brooks and Texas had killed a lot of teams with running the ball today, Texas was still able to go out and run for 6.4 yards a carry. And it's because felt like the defensive line was getting early contact, but they just couldn't wrap anybody up and bring him down. And Texas was turning one, two yard gains into four, five, six, seven yards every single drive, it felt like. And I think that's probably the biggest area defensively. Like you can, you know, point fingers at the secondary early in the game getting burnt, but really it comes down to the defensive line. They were a no show on Saturday. And for all the people we're going to blame, Chris Kleiman, Colin Klein, Joe Klanderman, Will Howard, whoever you're going to try and saddle all this on, I think at the end of the day, I mean, Chris Tenna is another name, Brandon Plattner, special teams was not good today. I think at the end of the day, defensive line is probably not going to get as much as they should, but they let Texas get more yardage than they needed to on a lot of runs, and they just couldn't get any of the sacks that would have been beneficial. So, I mean, it goes back to what uh, Chris Kleiman was saying all, all week. And you heard it from Joe Klanerman and Colin Klein. Win the line of scrimmage and you're probably going to win the game. And Texas yeah. won the line of scrimmage. And yep. the, the game can be pretty simple when you win the line of scrimmage. I will say, though, that, that again, I hate picking and choosing like when do you do this. But like uh, 54 of Texas's yards did come on that one C.J. Baxter run. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. There, there was the one. Uh, big one that got burst there. So that will uh, that will do it for this edition of the Case State Online Instant Reaction. Drew and I will be back with KSU underscore fan later on Saturday night, early Sunday morning for the full Sunday show breakdown and recap from this game. Hey, we'll also let KSU underscore fan talk a little hoops in there as well because there's a basketball game to prepare for on Monday. So that will do it for us. We will be back 
momentarily. It'll be a few hours, but keep locking into the K-State Online YouTube throughout the rest of the evening. Might as well subscribe, turn the notifications on so you know when it's there immediately, and uh, stay locked in over on on 3 with all the K-State Online written stuff after players of the game from Drew, and then tons of stuff coming from DY down in Austin. So that will do it for this edition of the KSO Instant Reaction. We'll see you soon.